This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. guys it's time to get geeky get awesome it is the awesome cast year end edition it is episode 426 we are here in the uh, sorgatron media studios in pittsburgh pa the beachview neighborhood of pittsburgh as well i'm mike sorgat sorgatron on the twitter and uh, we got a hell of a crew with us first let's go down the line we have in studio john chichilla is with us he is a gadget guru over a big bank international esquire how's it going today and if you're on video you're you're probably like like it's probably like this is probably the worst thing for video compression is what you're wearing right now. He's wearing that static shirt. Yeah, that threw all of our cameras out of focus uh, several months ago. How's your how's your <laughs> microphones? How's my microphones? Hey, don't get me started. We were have some. Listen, I tried a new hookup. Before. I, I want you to fix it. It's crit- It's critical to my like at home. It is, and it'll work out. So we'll, we'll try Studio round C. two with you. I think it's some cord problems. Okay. I was trying to get it so the board audio goes into the remote um, situation, so that <laughs> yes, that's a technical term. You heard him. Ron Kraus is here as well. Remote situation. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> He's also a man of technological means at a big bank international. Yes. I yes. Am. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We went on a field trip today. Yes, we did. To your house to grab an Xbox. went X- to the hood. To get an Xbox power supply to that's see if right. that's what's I wrong with my Xbox hood. One. And it works. It yes, works. It does. And I have a new one on the way from Amazon because that's apparently the only place you can buy one. Some poor kid in McKee's Rocks is missing an Xbox power supply. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> it came from my Xbox. Thank mm-hmm. you. Wait, I didn't know. He just went around back. And then somebody, I mean, that wasn't even his house we went into. Uh, <laughs> Hold on. I'll be. Yeah, that's why he said keep the car running. Okay. Uh, that's also, we have some friends back on the show. No, I didn't invite 12 people on this year because I learned from that mistake. So, so we, we brought on, we brought on the reg, the, the, the uh, not regulars, but no, they're, they're the people when I'm like, if I want to. Like this is the inner circle. This is the people that I'm like. I want people on the show. This is the internal nice. list right here. We got upgraded. That's right. <laughs> first of like all, VIP. First of all, Uncle Crappy is with us, and inevitably, I will ask him how the newspaper business is going. It's, uh, it, it's okay. We're going to talk about that some, <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah, we're doing our. Right. And also with us, Cynthia Klosky is with us as well uh, with uh, Shift Collaborative. How you doing? I'm glorious, thanks. I also have a, a special guest guest star. Oh, Max is here. Welcome to Awesome out. Cat. Awesome. Hey, hey. I have two candidates for that title. You have what? Two more cats for the Awesome Cats. So we might get some furry cameos here if you guys are joining us on video as well. So fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you guys for joining us for the year-end edition. You guys, uh, thanks for joining us. Wherever you may be finding us, including our friends like our friends uh, Ronnie Starks in the chat room and Dave Potter uh, of the Tiny Shutter Podcast hanging out in the chat room. A lot of other people hopping in, too. Thank you so much. Brian Crawford. Uh, well, there's Chilla here. Uh, what's up, John McChesney, our friend up in the area? We'll be seeing you in a couple weeks at a show. And, um, you, and then of course, you guys can check out everything at awesomecast.com, uh, where you can get uh, links to the show and uh, you can subscribe to the show wherever you, you like your media, podcast, um, or video version. Please like and subscribe to us, uh, rate us, share it with your friends. Um, you can email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, awesomecast on the Twitter, awesomecast on the Facebook page. And, of course, a great awesome cast group where a lot of people are um, sharing stories throughout the week there. We're live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern <laughs> with a note from the producer, unless Sorg delays starting, like when I was trying to fix a new microphone situation here today. Thank you. Producer Missy here as well. 
uh, leave hey. your comments in there. Uh, but we are here live every uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Of course, the big one is on the Awesome Cast Facebook page. It's where we have the chat room where we'll be uh, uh, interacting with a lot of you guys out there. But also, we're streaming on several other platforms on the Search on Media Network, be, be it Periscope and Twitch and everything else. But if you are you are, if you are seeing us on those platforms, please hop over to the Facebook page if you want us to uh, uh, see what you're putting into the comments. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm noticing some of the comments in there as well. But we'll get to those. Um, also, check out our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com. They carry us Saturdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And also our friends on the West Coast, the 405Media.com. They carry us weekdays, the latest episode, at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time. So you can go uh, check out them. Thank you to our streaming partners for carrying the show. Also, if you want to be part of the studio audience, you won't be for the next couple of weeks because we take a little bit of a hiatus until the first Tuesday that's not a holiday in the new year. Um, or if you're looking for some great advertising options, you've uh, probably heard us talking about some new things in the last couple of weeks here uh, as part of the uh, Jagoff holiday guy. Uh, if you're interested in any of those opportunities, hit up producer Missy at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Thank you to our Patreon supporters at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller and John D. DeGore, as well as the fan of the show at the $1 level, uh, Michael Fedor. You guys can support the show too at patreon.com slash awesomecast if you're getting some value and some entertainment out of this so we uh as the last episode of the year we do mix it up a little bit we don't do the awesome thing of the week we do an awesome thing of the year and we'll get, be getting to uh predictions here uh, later in the show as well and i'm kind of glad that we don't have like a mass of people like we usually like we did last year because I, I i i like that we can hopefully like get into some of these topics um as well and <laughs> And there's and there's still some coming in as well. Um What the hell? <laughs> Anyways, um well, let's let's start with Chilla. Chilla, what was your awesome thing of so the year? So my awesome thing of the year, I have two. Cause I because Krauss is gonna do two, so I think I should get to do two. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll never get out of here. We're gonna have to delay the mayhem show. So so my first one's the Nintendo Switch. It's it's made a change to me just playing random like phone and tablet games. Mm -hmm. um, I can take it anywhere. I'm actually, I'm really enjoying the game selection and I am going to break down on Thursday and subscribe to their, finally their, their service so I can get more free games. That hot $20 a year, $20. It's expensive, man. So that that's number one, number two. And I feel like this is new. So it's, it's awesome thing of the year and week. Um, Apple is Apple Music is now available on Amazon devices, and you can actually set it as the default music service. Mm -hmm. So, as an Apple Music subscriber, um, I use it in my car with CarPlay. I use it at home with the HomePod. I use it on my phone. I use it everywhere. But the HomePod is a bit expensive to be putting all over the house versus a twenty dollar dot. So now I have anywhere in the house I can say, hey, a train, play whatever, and I can get the entire music library everywhere I go. There you go. So that makes me super happy. And yeah, the things are generally starting to play a little better with each other because I, I was just showing you the, uh, I was just, actually, I was just showing uh, uh, Ron on the way over here when we went on our field trip a little bit ago the, you know, hey Siri, okay Google. There they all oh. go. There they all go. Oh, oh, that, oh. it's going to do it. And it's going to open Assistant. And then I can tell it to do something like use play, Google Play Music. So it, it, it's been a lot of like kind of that crossover ha happening this but year. But now, like, you don't, because you, what surprised me is not only did they add the service, but mm -hmm. they, they made it where you can make it a default. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to say, you're not going yeah, through, hey, you're not train, jumping through hoops. Tell Apple Music to play, blah, 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 blah. I can just say, Hey, a train play, wow. whatever. And then, of course, Cortana is playing with a lot of things too. She is. Uh, yeah, isn't she with the with a train now? Oh yeah, she is. She's hanging with a train. I, I I feel like Cortana. They ride the bus together. <laughs> yes, like... they're right. <laughs> we're all riding the bus together. And by the way, can I just point out that John called a twenty dollars yearly subscription expensive when he's carrying around a thousand dollar cell phone. With a thousand dollar lap, two thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many screens? Wait, 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 wait. Come on, pull another screen out of your bag. 
I know you can't. There's, there's more. It's in the other bag. <laughs> oh, it's in the other bag. But, He's carrying two bags. How many screens were you? Did you carry into the studio with you today? One, two, three, four. So I get to count the watch. Five. Yes. Six. I'm guessing seven. You have more screens you carried in here than I have on my <laughs> desk right now for <laughs> podcasting and video production. I think I have okay, eight. but your screens are bigger. My for you. But, but they do less because each one size, size does not size doesn't matter, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop that twenty dollars so you can play your Mario Brothers online, yes. man, please. So I can play Super Mario so Three and Super Zelda. Mario Three and Zelda. Come on, because I don't want to drop the fifty bucks for the the NES Classic. <laughs> Uh, yep. Priorities. Priorities. All right. Let's go to let's go to you guys out on, out there in the internet land. Uh, Cynthia Koloski, what is your awesome thing of the year? So I um here at home I've got uh you know I've got an Amazon Echo I've got mm-hmm. um Apple TV of course we've got Siri but I am suddenly tempted to get a Google Home um I don't have little kids but um Google is uh, Google Home is partnered with Disney and has this thing now where they have a story time where like you read a, a there's only a couple books like six books which are books that are, they're kind of book you can read in two minutes um so they're mostly for little kids but it'll create a whole story time with sound effects and like visuals like it i mean if you watch the video that they show or if anyone has tried this because it's been around about a month or so um it's i mean it just feels like amazing so i just see this as I think they're they're um, the book that they're one of the books they read like seems to be a Pixar book, so I imagine they're going to expand this out as a way of expanding their franchise. But this is the world I want to live in. I want there to be sound effects and special lights and disco music whenever I read books. <laughs> disco music. I read them all out. You, you had me. Well, in- I mean. You had me until disco music. Well, it depends on the book, of course. If it's okay. not a disco book, not so much. So I hope they team but, this up. I mean, I just feel like you, then you, it's it's a different way to think about a virtual reality. You know what I mean? So that you're still in your world, but it's an augmented world, augmented reality kind of a thing. And it just feels so awesome. So obviously very fun for entertaining kids. And I can understand why they would start with that market. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm really excited to see Alice in Wonderland, which is you know my favorite book of all time to see what they're going to do with that, for example. So I think that's among the most interesting, amazing things that's happened this year. I'm definitely going to give this a a whirl and I'm hoping they, they go to some of the back catalog of books because I have, we do the, the five minute star Wars stories. Mm -hmm. So it's like all of the different star Wars movies broken up into five minute increments. So I, I hope this works with, with some of those. That would be awesome. And and I just so happen to have a Google Home sitting in the box, waiting to be for something to do. Waiting so. for somebody to talk to <laughs> it. <laughs> Only you. Oh my gosh! Man, man, <laughs> that, that, it, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. That's crappy. gonna be incredible. And, and, and it's like my my sister um, went with 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 her oldest son. Um, this is this was my introduction to Harry Potter. They sat when he was an infant and read him a chapter of and i think they got through like the first three books before he was um before they abandoned this project but every single night um Mm -hmm. can you imagine what that would sound like with with sound effects and and oh my gosh and maybe disco music and maybe (laughs) (laughs) dragon roars and uh you know whatever else that would would be incredible that would be really really cool you know the thing that concerns me though you know, my kids are obviously older now, mm. and I can remember back in the day we would watch The Lion King for the ten thousandth time, mm. and that just was just wearing out the VHS, and right? And that was a you know, full length movie. Yeah, how many times are you going to hear those six stories? <laughs> <laughs> like if i watch the lion king 500 times read me coco again it's, yeah i like wow does there what t- you said it for was me it was the blues brothers but yeah I, I understand the blues brothers <laughs> <laughs> for me it was the ghostbusters movie yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, well, uh, we all have to go out and watch this so that they know there's a demand, and then they'll make more, right? Isn't yes, that, isn't that how the, do, the economics do. works? Yes, yes. Like, why are there only six things of Viewmaster available? You know, for busy, you know, until they grow. <laughs> all right, uh, let's go with uh, Kraus. What is your 
Well, you, I, one of your two awesome yeah, things of the year. I have a personal and a professional. Uh huh. The professional one was getting to go to my first large scale uh, event. I got to go to Microsoft Ignite this year. We talked about it earlier. And I really enjoyed it. I learned a ton while I was there. I can't specify how great of an experience it was. Um, and I did learn a, a lot of stuff that, for my everyday job at the Big Bank International. Um, and then personally, it's the Google Home and the, the home automation that has come along with it. You know, I started out with a Nest thermostat. And then I added the Nest doorbell and a couple lights. And a, now there's three Google Homes, two of the pucks and one of the... Because there's like small, medium, and large. Yeah. yeah. I didn't go large, but I, I have... Super size it. <laughs> I have two smalls and one medium in my home now. And um, I really... It's funny because even my wife now expects to talk to lights like the fact that she has to actually go over and turn a light on throws her off at times mm -hmm. so <laughs> do, you do, the, do you do the thing where you say thank you like does it work yes. yet where you say thank you and, and like, you're welcome anytime yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah <laughs> that was so i was listening to um i think it was roderick on the line and he, and he was trying to demonstrate something with echo a train uh -huh. and and you know i was like no stop no stop no stop no stop <laughs> thank you yeah, like it uh -huh. was very like it was a very sincere thank you like like kind of thing. And yeah. I, think, I think there's been discussion about how do you teach your kids to be like <laughs> nice to appliances. I guess. Yeah. Well, I, it's, I think it gets to be confusing for for little kids. Like they don't understand to not say like when you're trying to teach them to say thank you for things. Yeah, they don't under comprehend. That and they, there's not going to be a big separation between the voice in the tube and and the teacher in the school, right? Mm -hmm. So in the long run. This is. I, I was thinking about this important. when we were talking about like the Google Home in the box and like has nobody to talk to. This <laughs> exacerbates what I've determined personally as the brave little toaster problem, um, where I put a voice and a personality to physical inanimate things because I think it's the brave little toaster. I've never read that. Is that a book? <laughs> no, it's a. a book? It was probably also a book, but it was a Disney movie. It was like oh, a little known uh -huh. Disney movie in like maybe the eighties. Yes. In yeah. The 80s. Oh man, that delivered a huge complex for me growing up. We're watching it like once. Yeah. I have to go find that. Yeah. <laughs> that are, are you guys? Go ahead. Go ahead. No. I was gonna say, are you fans of um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Because I'm also thinking of I can't think of the robot's name there, played mm. by Alan Rickman in the in the movie, but. The, I mean, that was where Douglas Adams, and this, you know, would have been back in the 70s, was thinking about personalities for robots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, we're, and, and oh, wow. you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when the, there's, a, there's a big paper for Google on their whole thing behind their AI and how they try to give it a personality. It's like the 21, 21 rules to, I can't remember what it was. It's not like the Turing, it's not the Turing test thing. It's, no, it's, more, it's not that. Um, it's, it's, it's that personality tricking thing, like what they're doing when they're like calling, uh, when they're calling restaurants for your reservation with a robot. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, well, while he's finding that, uh, Krause, you do have a second one. Uh, yeah, well, that, 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 I said them both. Going to Microsoft Ignite and um, Google Home and the Google <laughs> Wait, Home I'm sorry, automation. I'm sorry, roll back a second. Yeah. Because Missy uh, just put an all huge in the, Thing producer Missy says Marvin Marvin the paranoid android yes yeah yes I put the yes I I added the yes oh yes <laughs> yes no I yes uh, all, all in favor yeah yeah <laughs> sorry Kraus go ahead that's okay and like I said and it started out very slowly in my house and it just as I started adding things like the very first thing I bought was this plug. A simple plug that you plug something else into, mm -hmm. and then you could just have it turn on. And we have a little adagier with some pictures and some lights and things on it. Mm -hmm. And every time my wife was having to get down when people would come over, to, before they came over and plug in all these different separate things. So I bought this one little light switch, and you could say, hey, G, turn on the stand. What's up, G? And bling, it would come on. And... That just was so nice. And then it was like, well, maybe I'll buy a couple of light bulbs and then maybe I'll buy this and maybe. Mm -hmm. And it really does. It's amazing how fast 
you get used to talk. I, I, it, it's hard to explain, but you do. You get used to talking to these things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what, what was your professional thing? Uh, Microsoft Ignite <laughs> conference. You got to go to Ignite? Yes. It you was... got to be amongst the, the Microsoft people? Yes. And I got to learn a bunch of things. And f- uh, it was the first real conference that I had ever gone to. So mm-hmm. it was a very good experience. And I hope I get to do it again someday. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Uh, Crappy, were you about to say something? Oh, uh, did we lose them? Uh, did you lose we're us? Back, we're back. You're back. You're we're back. back. We're something back. weird going on with the connections. Uh, Crappy, were you about to say something before you cut out? I, I, I was. Um, I, 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 you guys were talking about people getting used to this stuff. And, and um, Kelly uh, was almost, my wife, was almost resentful when I brought Alexa and in, put in her in our living room. <laughs> you brought um, another woman home and her name's Alexa. It's not that, but it's just like, it's just an intrusion and it's annoying. And why do we need this? And now mm-hmm. on the days when I, um, uh, when, when she has to get up earlier than I do, I hear her go downstairs and I hear her. She still sounds resentful. She yells, she yells when she has to speak to Alexa, <laughs> but, but she says, Alexa, uh, you know, uh, PR. So, because she wants to listen to, and she knows, you know, we, we have a, a downstairs channel. So she says that this whole thing, and she's got it, and it and it's on. So there's progress there, which is which is really cool. Um, and uh, and as much as she would hate to admit it, she's enjoying it too. Interesting. So I find that I like I talk to the wrong device. Like I have my Alexa in my kitchen because it helps me keep track of timers when I cook and, mm-hmm. you know, tells me jokes and plays music while I'm cooking. And then everywhere else, I just have Siri. But so every now and again, I will try to talk to Alexa, like in my room when I want to know what the weather is. And, and it's getting confusing, but I also don't, I don't want everybody everywhere. Like I don't, it's <laughs> bad enough when I'm like in the kitchen, I'll be like, okay, I need to get, I want to add this to my grocery list. I'll say, Hey Siri, add such and such to my grocery list. And then, like, I feel like Alexa is going to get jealous. You know, it feels weird. I get it. I get it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Have like, you sneak off like to another a, car- uh, corner of your house where, where Alexa can't hear you to talk well, to Siri? Well, I am Siri pretty thing? sure that Alexa is listening, and I wonder whether they aren't tracking that. Like, how often do I talk to Siri instead of Alexa? Like, really? I don't really think that Alexa is jealous, but I think, <laughs> you know, Amazon might be. Yeah. You know? Jeff Bezos might be. All right. We got a couple other awesome things, including um, a few, uh, one from the chat room, at least. If you guys do have awesome things uh, of the year uh, you want to submit out there in the chat room in the Facebook here live, please do that. But in the meantime, I want to get a shout out to somebody who's been sponsoring the show in this holiday season and something really cool uh, that, man, I've got a couple things in my shopping cart from this. Uh, our friends from Pittsburgh Things. Uh, have been sponsoring the show for the month of December. Uh, that's uh, Pittsburgh-themed apparel and that. I don't know if you guys have seen this here that are uh, first time on this month. Uh, Pittsburgh Things is simply that. Berg best in apparel, including T-shirts and unique garments like dresses, yoga leggings, and even socks. I know you're looking at the yoga leggings there, Kraus, uh, featuring, uh, featuring the Pittsburgh skyline. Like on your socks and your and your mm. leggings and, and such, right? Uh, consider it city stitches in a wide variety of options. Perfect for stocking stuffers and giftables for that yinzer on your list. Uh, Tony uh, uh, Landolina uh, designed each piece on the site. You can check it out at pittsburghthings.com. I probably do the worst Pittsburghese accent ever uh where's the gluten check it check it out check it out check it out check it out i mean my family is is yinzer i don't know i don't know why i never came through uh I like your know, a pierogi whisperer is still one of my favorites here resting bridge face um <laughs> i wish was a full of pierogi instead of ex- existential dread is the very millennial one uh matt washington that's how my mom says it uh <laughs> so much uh good stuff uh slippy when wet uh, great shirts. Go check them out. PittsburghThings.com. Really easy to Slippy remember. Slippy when wet that. is very good. Slippy, Slippy when wet. I would I'll agree. Come. That is very good. Slippy when wet. All has right. Anyone, has, has anyone ever seen a t-shirt or something that says Slippy Rock University? No. <laughs> I, I, there's a missed opportunity here, I think. Slippy Rock for all the all yeah. the Pittsburgh-y yeah. uh, transplants up there, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's going to happen. Crappy, what is your awesome thing of the week? 
Um, year, I just noticed. I, I noticed that Dirta just uh, started watching, and and I have to point this out to him. This is my awesome thing for Doug, and Trogs just put this on Facebook today. Um, I'm doing this about 50-50, and it totally works. So just a just a thing. Um, as long as you're uh, uh, looking to pass your time while you're you're seeking employment, um, my awesome thing is appropriately. Uh, uh, ancient for the, the for the journalism business because this, this is sort of how we do things. But it's email, and specifically it's email newsletters. Um, I, I, this is not technically a new thing uh, for us or for the industry, um, but I, I wanted to point it out um, because it's it's actually it's, it's a digital product that that actually works. Um, it, it, it works for us, obviously, in a lot of ways. There are there are click throughs, though. So uh, it drives traffic a little bit. It improves engagement, um, it, it, particularly if we're smart about uh, how these are constructed. Um, I did a, I did, as an example, I did a, I started a, this kind of a, a smart ass snarky uh, 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 food based newsletter weekly thing, um, highlighting restaurant restaurant reviews, recipes, that sort of stuff. Melissa McCart, our our her excellent. Uh, the Post Gazette's excellent uh, f- uh, restaurant critic took it over, and she has grown it uh, exponentially in, in in the in the three or four months since she got it because she it, she's made it personal. Um, mm-hmm. She's she's talking to you. Um, it's it's not. I mean, it, it it brings traffic back to the site, yes. But the bigger thing is that um, the bigger thing is that uh, she is uh, she writes it as though she is speaking to a person, um, and and that. Cool. And, it's, and it's and it's awesome for the for the audience too because uh, it's an easy thing um, you control when you get it. It's not like there's a boom, there's a, a push alert in your thing. You don't have to go to a new platform. You don't have to download a new app. Um, and and again, I, and I think that the, the relationship thing works for uh, for the people who are receiving this too. Um, and, mm-hmm. and again, Melissa is the, uh, the, the the best example of this of the of the, the few that we have. Um, it's, it's going to be a big. It's going to continue to be a big deal. I mean, the Washington Post has, uh, I think I saw close to eighty. Wow. Periodic newsletters. Well, this is something. Um, this is something. The, uh, you you know, uh, the colleague of yours um, was involved in. Uh, Jason Calacanis did this with the Inside. Dot com stuff mm-hmm. like and I was mm-hmm. I was actually just looking through because I, I kind of they they kind of white noise in my in my inbox a little bit but I was like poking yeah. back through like there's an inside podcasting and inside streaming um, inside there was another inside technology I think that I followed and they're all like super served subjects mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. you know and then you can dig right in like yeah I want this without all the fluff of everything else right you know I it's, mean it's interesting um the the earlier ones that that we that that we've started there there are some automated ones there's just the just basic headlines one um mm-hmm. and then the one that I'm responsible for uh we started three ish years ago um and, and it has a a pretty broad uh audience it has a, a a pretty broad subscription base um the ones that we started more recently uh, have uh, with the, our marketing folks have done a very nice job of targeting uh, people. Um, so while, like again, Melissa's the the, the, the restaurant newsletter um, has a much smaller audience. The open rate is ridiculous. Um, if you if you look at it, twenty uh, percent open rate as a, as kind of the industry standard. Um, uh, the the newer ones uh, are are reaching the people who want to see uh, what they're getting. Um, and, and they and they have control over that, so it's been a it's it's been a helpful tool. Um, it brings people back to the site. It re, it requires uh, registration, uh, which will be a helpful thing for us uh, in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, you hope to convert those registrations to, to to paid subscribers at some point. So yeah, it's 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 funny to hear to to say journalism is relying on email as our as our our tech thing of the year. But that's that's how we do things, right? But it is it is it is sort of it's, appropriate. It's something that it cuts through the noise, and it's a mass, you know, access point because yeah. Yeah. everybody's yeah. got email, right? But I feel like mm-hmm. it gives you a good gauge for readership, and because because there's a lot you can do nowadays with email. It's not just send it and forget it. Being able to hit, the, see the click through, see which people actually 
clicked through and then target and them with what more is information. Clicked on too, yeah. What's clicked on, how many people opened it, all of that data that you can gather around that to me is so much more than you can get out of mm-hmm. a, a, a tweet or a Facebook post. In, in general, from it's what I've seen. I'm going to I'm going to talk about that in when we get to our predictions. Oh, mm. sorry, I will I will shut up. That's no, where, you're good. You're good. That's you're where good. we ask about the newspaper business. You are you are uh, you are uh, years ahead of the journalism curve, which is not surprising. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, he there's really two the flavors of those. Go ahead. There's really, there's really two flavors of those email newsletters. There's the ones like the Post Gazette's doing, and of course, I love Mike's because uh you can hear his voice in it and he gets to be a little snarkier than he I probably gets to do elsewhere <laughs> in his job which is fun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um but then there's also the um the sort of um aggregators like eat that read this or whatever the whatever whatever that uh-huh. is and where uh-huh. they're I'll often see like you'll have like Mike you'll have like one angle on a story that's maybe close cues a little closer to the editorial angle and then he'll have this different perspective that's true to his readership and his angle mm-hmm. but either way it's pulling out stuff that i'm not going to read every paper every day mm-hmm. and so i'm interested in whatever stuff people are ready to throw in front of me and give me some kind of a hook into it and help me decide whether to read it so from a user perspective it's i think it, it also reminds me of like the days before blogging when this mm-hmm. was how we all wrote our little essays and sent yeah. them around but yeah. um, but I do I do really like the idea of it being a little bit something in between push and pull where I get to choose when I get pushed, yeah. but somebody's still choosing what to highlight for me out of the mass of information available. That's I, I did a I I did a and this absolutely does not count as market research, but I, I did a survey, um, and I, I I linked to it for like I think a week um, earlier in the fall. And among the questions I asked people, you know, when and how do you do you, uh, do you um, consume the PG feed, uh, which is the newsletter that I do every day. And it was always when I have a chance. And it was all and, and, and the majority was almost no one said I read it, you know, from from start to finish. Almost everyone said either. Um, and I don't remember the wording of the, of the, the, the exact wording of the options, but it's like uh i i skim or i go through most um and and it was that that reinforces the notion that 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 people will uh that, that people want something that they they can get to when they get to it um which is which works for email uh, again that goes back to the to the kind of control that the consumer has and uh and, and, the, and the same thing with like well you know I, I might not get through everything, but um, I, I get through most of it. Uh, I, I take a quick look. I might click on a couple things, um, and, and that's that. That is that is all gravy for us. Uh, if, if we get people back to the site, that's awesome. Um, if we get them engaged and if they just enjoy what they're reading, that that's a that is a helpful thing as well. Awesome. Well, I, I'm going with something that's maybe not all that new, uh, but it keeps getting upgraded. Here's my. Um, well worn. I'll hold it up for the camera. Very well worn Pokemon Go. That's uh, uh, about uh, over a year and a half uh, uh, old. The Pokemon Go Plus, but it keeps getting upgraded, and I love every time somebody's like, "Hey, I played it when it first came out," and I was like, "Yeah, try it because it's a completely different game." Um, I don't play. I haven't played Fortnite in several months. Like I just didn't stick with it. Right. I'm barely playing anything else, but I still check into my Pokemon Go, like every day. I, I feel like Pokemon Go keeps you coming back because there's that there's a little more instant gratification. Mm-hmm. And also there's enough of a community to brag to about like, look, oh, look what I caught or look what yeah. I got. Yeah. Like, like, like sometimes I'll, I will take a still and, and say it to a group of people mm-hmm. on text and be like, hey, check this weird thing out that I just found. Right. Yeah. I feel like I feel like there's more back and forth than in that than I, I don't feel like. Fortnite, there's as big of a community of my friends that I'm going to make right. time that and you have to make time to log on mm-hmm. at the same time as everyone else where I can just like kick it's- it on at work, play a little bit. And now and, and, and the upgrades too, like they changed the gym system. They change they, they have um, these new goals that professor that I still don't trust. I think he's kind of shady. 
Uh, it gives you a lot of things to do. Like, hey, take a... And, and it's smart stuff that makes you try parts of the game. Like, I never cared about curveballs until I had to make an excellent curveball in order to get to the next level of uh, of, of uh, goals for this, right? Plus the daily goals and everything like that. Like, there's something to work towards other than just catching them all and leveling them up right and there's new ways to get those things too so i i think that's been a really big thing for it. plus you know stuff like this still works you know the apple uh watch integration is pretty neat that i can get a pokemon ball now that seems to do the same thing as the pokemon go i mean it's so successful and now the new pokemon games on the switch look like pokemon go I, yeah. like, the, the fighting mm-hmm. is done like pokemon go they just started uh player versus player i played a little bit with missy um, for that, and I'm kind of curious to see how, what that turns into. It's like it's a little different, like some some different strategy to it than if you're in a gym or something, playing in like a non-player representation of somebody's player out there, right? Um, it, it it is. It, it's grown. It's an improved, and it's still it still like gets your interest if you're into this kind of thing, right? They they have the right cadence of like, hey, there's a bunch of new Pokemon got released. Hey, those ones that have been sitting there for a while, there's another evolution for them or something, right? Um, so I, that's it's still got my attention, still a thing when I'm traveling. Uh, <laughs> you know, we you know gives you a reason to hold on to things like you know they're, they're letting you know like, hey, you've had this Pokemon since 2017, and there's mm-hmm. a little badge by it now. So you can see that longevity of it, and now you can do more with those ones that sit on. So now, if anybody wants a Pokemon, a Pikachu with a with a with a funny hat, I got all of them, and I've been holding on to them. I didn't get rid of any of them. I, you know, the I have like fifty Pikachus. I have a ton of Pikachus because because they're a pain in the butt to get rid of. You can't mass delete them. I don't know if you've ever. Oh, tried. really? You can't mask get rid of them because they're you special. Because they're special, you have to get rid of each one individually. Individually, yeah. and the. I don't know if it's the Santa hat or the birthday hat one. It tells you like this is the birthday 2016. This is the birthday 2017. Mm. So you can actually tell the difference in the 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 even when they reuse the same hat, mm-hmm. it counts it as like the different year. There's gifts that there's gifts to open. There's the adventure sink that just dumps a bunch of balls in your lap if you've been walking around with this or just with your phone in general. Like the integration is getting more and more. You know, so it's, you know, it's kind of grafted onto my life a bit more. So, um, but no, that that's awesome. So it definitely, again, if you, if you haven't played it, um, and I don't know what it's going to be like for new people at this, because there's going to be a lot to do, like jump onto, but you know, and I don't know, I don't feel like professor Willow has been around that long. No, 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 no. But I mean, yeah, there's a lot of Pokemon. I still don't trust him to, he's powered by Facebook. Yeah, he has to be, he has to be. It's, it's fun to see the glitches when they've upgraded a little bit too. Like all the buttons are, are like all the code and stuff. And I got notifications that was just like gobbledygook code. Like it was all placeholder words. Mm-hmm. It's just like, hmm, interesting. I, I, I'm, I think that, I think the difficult thing would be to get some of the more powerful older. Yeah. Ones, Cause like it's hard to find an EV nowadays. Yeah. A little harder. Yeah. They're kind of coming back again, but you know, and that, that kind of kills you. I couldn't find dark Pokemon for like a month and a half and I needed it to, to beat a goal so that happens it, it, so that is like almost too much and then you have to really work at some of it but i think it's, it's still interesting enough oh we got it we got some cat we got some cat play going on here at crappies okay. oh. and it was it, it's, a, it's inevitable it was inevitable. inevitable it's like hi are you doing something important on the internet i need to be involved yeah. in this yeah I, all right it's, it's more like this this light is warm i want to be here mm-hmm uh dave Potter out in the chat room of course with the tiny shutter podcast so this makes sense his awesome thing of the year uh is smartphone cameras using machine learning to expand beyond the physical limitations of the lenses uh, that's been big with the uh, google in, in particular right yeah google what they call it, dark mode the dark Uses mode is pretty pretty yeah so i mean you your can yeah those cameras can only get so good being lenses but that you know size. but they are so good mm-hmm Let's be honest. Who, other than people that want to do uh, YouTube full time, mm-hmm. who's buying cameras? <laughs> yes. Yeah, seriously. Other than this guy over here. <laughs> yeah. So. When, when you have this in your pocket, you know. Th- I don't know. I shot. I shot my mom's. My mom's. Uh. Uh. uh Christmas. Uh. Uh. Performance. Uh, she plays the marimba percussionist. 
okay. uh, at our church. I, I just realized I filmed it in 4K on my phone. And if I brought any of my professional equipment, I would not be. So that's, well, there you go. <laughs> and, and I look at it too, like, how many people do you know that still pull out a point and shoot? Mm-mm. Like I, I see my father-in-law. Uh, <laughs> I have one. I, I, I do see I have like, one. You have one, but how often do you pull it out? Mm-hmm. Uh, I use it as a secondary camera for the beer show, uh, almost every episode. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a second. It's a secondary. Um, it actually looks different, so it's it's nice to have sort of a, a, a different um, a, a different feel, something to switch to. But yeah, that, that's that that's why that's why I keep it. Yeah, I have some family members that still pull out like a a newer DSLR, mm-hmm. and we're and mm-hmm. it's because well, it's like partner saying uh, wedding and event 30, photography. Yeah, <laughs> wedding and event photography. I could see, but like for the average. And, and, and this you're, is the you're not walking like, around with this is the conversation we have a lot because so much that we can do gets done on these devices but when you're like a production and you're paying your 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 charging production level things like if you paid what you would for a wedding photographer and you just pulled out an iphone 8 would you really be okay oh, with that you know although what's the old <laughs> saying well, the best <laughs> camera you have is the, the one, one you, you actually yeah, have yeah yeah the best camera is the one you have yeah you. so yeah but i mean i think that's just generally not like the professional thing right but i mean there's still you know i shoot the video on the pro cameras but then i pull out my phone to do the slow-mos right right like things like that like certain specific yeah. things so yeah. All right. Well, there's so much more going on here, but I want to give a shout out to somebody else who's been supporting us. Also, a part of your Jagoff's holiday gift guide. You can go over to jagoff.com, find more information about these and other uh, groups. This is up there on McKnight Road in the North Hills. Our good friends over there. Oh, let me pull this up the right way because I forgot that I had graphics for these guys. There we go. Uh, our friends over at Core Life e- e- ah, Core Life Eatery. Thank you. Thank you, words, for working tonight. Uh, it's the last one of the year. Just, just get it out, man. Uh, <laughs> Core Life Eatery is at the block at a Northway. Uh, that's up there, again, on McKnight Road, kind of up there around the Giant Eagle and everything, right? Uh, but go check them out up there. And uh, as I was saying, and it, this is everywhere. I know we have some people in Pittsburgh and, and all over the place. So they have several locations all across the country, uh, but they bring uh, clean, healthy, and great tasting foods to everyday meals with uh, hearty bowls featuring greens, grains, and brown broths. All ing- ingredients are free of GMOs, trans fats, artificial colors, sweeteners, and other artificial additives. It's fresh, fit, and fine for any time of the day, especially during the holiday season. Shop till you drop and make them your eating stop. Visit them at the block on Northway, uh, the block at Northway, uh, lower level to check them out. I, I haven't been in that building. They just redid that. So there's a lot of cool uh, new shops in there. David Buster's is there too. That's crazy. Yes. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Nice. But check out these it's guys, nice. corelifeeatery.com. And I think, Shilly, you were just talking about like the allergies. Uh, uh, yeah, know. I was impressed with their menu and how they had everything categorized, not only by like vegan vegetarian or, or whatever protein type thing but all of their like nut allergies and just different types of things that you could be allergic to listed out in their menu absolutely go check them out again part of the Jagoff holiday guide corelifeeatery.com and thanks to them for supporting the awesome cast all right. So with that, also, also Missy says her awesome thing of the year is Dutters because I did not include her when I said about the awesome people on the show this week. Also Doug, but Doug's never free on Tuesdays. So, uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, so let's get into first. We need to shame our uh, predictions from last year. And let's see. Do we start with the people that can't defend themselves this year, or I think so. I think so. Okay. All right. All right. No. <laughs> so let's see who wasn't here last year. I know we have such a Jim Loke <laughs> said Vine Two is going to be a failure. Was that basically Instagram TV? A little bit. No, I think they were. Oh, there, there was, was one coming. That Vine I, Two was coming, right? Yeah. Well, I, it didn't. It never launched. It was a failure. He <laughs> was right. He was right. It was a pre-failure, apparently. Is it is it a failure or is it is it is it like undetermined? It's more like it never was. Failure um, to launch. Was it a failure in 2018? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 
Will, uh, Will Rutherford on here. Net neutrality is going to get pushed through, and it's going to be like a, it's going to be a kerfuffle. ISPs are going to do what ISPs do, but customers are going to drop like flies. Really, they're going to lose so much business that they're going to roll things back, and it will be all for naught. Well, if he had, if he had stopped at the first sentence, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically, net neutrality <laughs> happened, and nothing really changed. Really? Well, they're Sorry, starting well, to. Aren't they starting to hit on? I thought there was just some announcement this week where they're actually going after some ISPs. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. But nobody's losing customers. No one's losing. I would We're say, not at the point no, where they're doing. They're no. they're 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 not doing the crap that that the customers notice. Mm-hmm. They're giving me free data for HBO. I, I and I think it's because the last time that this happened, people started to revolt and what remember, remember netflix bought speed test dot was it speed test dot net or speed test dot com oh really yeah so so what, what oh yeah and it was like their own speed test so what happened was yeah when this when this happened before net neutrality kicked in verizon and comcast and all the major isps were every time you would say oh my netflix is slow the the vendor would have you go out to speedtest.com to test your speed. And they made sure speed test was always good, but Netflix was so, so, so Netflix went and bought speed test. Mm -hmm. So if Netflix was going to get good throughput, if speed test was going to get good, good throughput, then so, so did was, Hmm. um, Netflix. So I'm, I'm guessing that there's enough knowledgeable people out there that it won't go unnoticed and people will switch people there's enough news the guy the news was on in the burger king the other day and uh there's enough like hey check out that you know if if you get something from netflix say you need to change your account it's not a good email like like Mm -hmm. phishing schemes are covered on the evening news that means the most people will now pay attention to it and be afraid of the internet, I guess, but still. Uh, going down the list, Michael Fedor was on the show last year, our Patreon supporter out there. He says, Disney will have one major one major purchase in the next year. And then we do go on and jokingly introdu- it, it, it introduced it with living under the United States of Disney. Disney will pay down the national debt and come in on some sort of crisis. Uh, so other than the joking part aside, uh, they I think they are officially through with purchasing Fox. That's a yeah, go so. right yeah. now. I think so. so yes. yes, that that was a that's a big one. That is a big one, and also their purchases all represented in the record Ralph too. Very interestingly, <laughs> so, um, uh, John Carmen, uh, we're going to see the first Amazon key burglary. Did we hear about those this year? That was when the like the, you have the code to get in. Yeah, you can let them in. I have I Ooh. haven't heard of any. Of I think not yeah, enough people happened. bought it. Yeah. So Bobby Cherry says Elon Musk is going to have some breakthrough next year through one of his companies. Well, he had a breakthrough. He had a breakdown. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There were there were break there was a breakdown. Yeah, there, there was, was a break something. Yeah. Uh, well, he did the I just saw that he wrote he's raising I, th- like, I, th- I think technically correct. I think <laughs> <laughs> Sure, sure. Uh Brian Crawford. I just read a prediction. He's going to get booted from as CEO from Tesla next oh, year. Sooner People or later. Sooner or later. Wait, but that's like Tony that Stark. Also, lose count as a breakdown, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, also counts as a breakdown. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brian Crawford says we're going to start turning into cyborgs with our wearable tech and implant devices. We're also going to see regulations regarding drones. I don't think much of any of that happened this year. No. There was something with drones. <laughs> I saw, I can't remember who it was. I saw. Yeah, didn't the FCC require the FCC's requiring certain things for for the, certain size for certain drones? Size drones. Okay, so the, is that the stuff that that they started rolling on two years ago is finally coming in? I think so. And there wasn't there some you can write like there's some drone registration that you may have to go through. So it's not like the Mutant Registration Act or anything. Thank, but, wow, I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. Thank you. <laughs> but no, jeez. Um. Yeah, I've seen I've seen people posting on Facebook about the regular regulations and registration for drones, but I don't know if it's a certain size or a certain location. But aren't there like in New York City, you can only fly them in certain places? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a safety thing. Things. Well, there. it's a safety thing with that many people around. Right. So yeah, absolutely. All right, all right. Let's shame the people that are here. 
Mike Pound, Uncle uh, Crappy. I'm totally correct. Your digital side of journalism is going to continue to build in 2018. And I have come. I have. I have evidence that I'm not allowed to share with you. That I am. <laughs> it's classified. People familiar with am, the matter say I yes. Absolutely. I am absolutely. I will. I will say um, uh, the efforts that 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 we have been through. Okay. Uh, uh, big picture. Regardless of what the guy in the White House says. Um, uh, digital subscriptions, engagement at the at the, the national level newspapers, Washington Post, New York Times, uh, USA Today. Um, have continued to grow, um, and, and I Even know from at, at a at a local this level, at a news. local level, um, our efforts to uh, to, uh, to to ask for registration, to ask for digital subscriptions, they have improved also. Um, so I'm I'm coming out as a win. Sounds good. Sounds good. All okay. right. Next Thank on the list, um, it's awesome when you get to be your own judge. That's, that's <laughs> <really cool. laughs> and not. And not share your data, not show your yeah, work. I, mean, it's, it's like, I would love to tell you guys about this, but I uh, but I can't. It's it's just have to trust me. <laughs> Jeez, how convenient. <laughs> uh, Cynthia Klasky continued uh, continued escalation of the Google Apple Amazon streaming war. Apple TV available for sale on Amazon again. There was yeah, there was she hit it. Yeah, yeah that's correct, right? Those things are true. Yes, it was not the hardest prediction in the world. I will say that. <laughs> Did not, did not stretch for that one. Let's see. Chilla, we're going to see another huge drop-off on PC technology. How's your Surface? <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, interestingly enough, it, so we saw the, what was it, Q2? We saw the first growth right. in like seven years of, so P- I was, of the PC market. Of the PC market. Right. I was wrong. You were yeah. wrong. Wow. And also <laughs> the uh, competing, um, competing chip manufacturers, too kind of positioning to challenge intel yeah because not just from an amd perspective but who was it um is it qualcomm i think it's qualcomm who makes a snapdragon chip yeah Yeah. i mean they announced their new their next gen chip that won't be available until fall of next year that will rival the current intel i5 processor so yeah well Mm -hmm. i think i definitely foresee more trouble in 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 intel's (laughs) world so I'm reading Krause's one next. AR is going to be much bigger, a bit much bigger deal than even VR is now, as of a year yeah, ago. And nothing. I mean, nothing's really. Which is very surprising. Like both of them. Nothing. Not much at I all. I feel like AR. I feel like headsets need to get more compact and self sustained. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. And I feel like there needs to be more meaningful AR content. Yes. Yes. I mean, I've talked about who 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 leaves their AR on in Pokemon Go. No one. No one. Nope. Nope. It's kind of interesting when you do turn it off and they're like hiding. And you actually actually have to find them though. Then you're like, well, why would I choose to do the harder thing? Right. So, anyways, I said the podcasting is going to be de-emphasized in 2018. Um. Well, <laughs> how many shows did you grow by? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking no. I'm thinking um, no. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Well, I thought, well, you know, there's an interesting thing. Is there's one thing that we call a podcast, and my client calls a podcast, but everybody watches on Facebook Live. That's, I mean, I think there's some muddying there a little bit, but I feel like, it's though, dirty like water. Masks, the mass market is much more aware of podcasting yes. than they were before. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, right around the time when you went to the, what what conference did you go to? The podcast movement, <laughs> right around there. Um, I think it was Durda or somebody was posting massive amounts of podcasting uh-huh. metrics and stats. Yeah, I, big it, news. Yeah, it is the, uh, the 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 new podcasting boom happened this year. No, I I just um it's- I I just think I I think a lot of podcasts still like do the well we're on facebook live and i think like again like a lot of things like bigger audiences seem to come for the facebook lives than do the podcasts in in, you know anecdotally right so i'm seeing that on a lower level but on the mass yeah I i don't know if that's entirely what's what's going on i feel like i'm still like i'm seeing internal trends but that's not necessarily informing the wider Serials mm-hmm. and everybody of the world. So you what, realize what, what, that what, that means everybody in the room failed. Everybody on the on the line 
was successful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is Jeez. true. Sorry, sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yep. Yep. There you go. All right. I, I would. We 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 did uh, just a, a, a quick thing. We did. We uh, the the PG had a, a true crime podcast that uh, first one we did mm-hmm. late last year. Did a second one this year, and 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 honestly, the, the traffic was ridiculous. Really. Um. It exceeded expectations. Uh, we have a we 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 had a woman. Who, she was a, a, a intern last year. She's a staffer this time who who produced these, and they sound uh, they, they they were both amazing series. Um, and and it's I mean it's something we thought let's, yeah sure let's let's give it a shot, and it, it turned out to be a much bigger deal than than we uh, ever expected. I and actually, there's, there's no there's no video component to this. This is no. this is old school. You you got downloaded and listened to it or listened yeah. to it live on on whatever whatever podcast thing you listen to. Um, but it, but the results were impressive. The, 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 that is also true. Like like as far as the the, the run of podcasting again internally, um, and again I was talking about trends like a year ago. Like we've had mm-hmm. more conversations about real advertising amongst podcasts on this and yeah. other shows than I've ever had. In the ten years doing it, or ten plus years doing this, Look, I'm I'm yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm not yeah. surprised. Like people are actually like looking at that stuff and and what's mm-hmm. going on and and, uh, and looking at it a different way than it was before, right? So I mean, we, and we've all been we've all been talking about podcasting for you know a decade plus. Yep. Um, but that's but when when the, when the, the mainstream notices that's that's sort of a, a, a decent measure of of, of uh, what what the what the reach is and and. That's that's been the experience I've seen. So how long till radios are gone from cars? Mm. My CD, uh, there's no, you can't get a CD mm. player anymore. Yeah. I think that's a cost thing, don't you think? Like how long before it costs too much to have an AM FM transmitter? I mean receiver, mm. you know, and transmitter. Uh, think like, about how long it took for the CDs. To, CDs went right away because mm-hmm. they're not cheap. No. to install one of those but uh, i think radio is just too cheap to be worth taking out right now but, but do you listen did you listen i mean oh, I, God, I, no. I i listen <laughs> i listen to npr right i listen to npr and i have satellite radio yeah so it, i mean the only over the air thing i'm listening to uh is is a local npr station and if i'm not doing that it's 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 my ipod or it's it's uh it's xm I think Agreed. we're going. My mom I only think listens to like audiobooks. I think we're, um, we're going. I'm saying that, uh, yeah. that you know, radio is small, so it's not taking up a lot of like space there in the car mm-hmm. as oh, far as yeah, like the electronics go. Yeah. And it also it is the amplifier. So, right. economics wise, there's not really a reason to not have it. And you replace it with a um, a Android Auto, and that just you're going to stream does it from Tesla your phone. Have any radio? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I bet you they do. They probably do. Just they probably it's, do. To, to Cynthia's yeah, point, it's standard free. All right, one more shout out here from the uh, Jagoff Holiday Guide, and we fixed the website this year, this week. Uh, Spresatora uh, creates a, and serves a heritage inspired cooking for events and the public. Uh, Spresatora means graceful execution and specializes in customized Italian American menus. You have my attention. Oh. Made with fresh ingredients and locally sourced. For their promise and commitment to sustain sustainable business practices that support local growers. Go visit SpresataraPGH.com for all your holiday needs. That's S-P-R-E-Z-Z-A-T-U-R-A-P-G-H.com. And, of course, check the link in our show notes for that as well. There's some great videos you Jag off had uh, with them uh, um, um, showing off the wares. And yeah, you're, you're going to get hungry too. Uh, yeah. Have them help you out with your, um, your holiday needs this season. Uh, Spreads of Terra PGH.com. Thank you to them for supporting the show and part of the Jag off holiday gift guide. All right. So now is the time for your predictions. And I'm going to, I'll, I'll go ahead and pick on, uh, a few of you guys out here that There's only a few of us that have put in entries ha- that have already put in entries. Maybe some of us some are, of us kind are of, winging it. Some of us might be winging it. That's how I end up with podcasting. Might die. Uh, guesses like I did last year. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Chilla, what is yours? Mine is video based communication will grow to a point that starts to threaten audio only. And why I say this is the more and more I start to walk around the city streets of Pittsburgh. 
the more and more I see people not just carrying on a phone conversation, they actually have they're they're carrying on a video conversation. Oh, dude, people do it in the in the seat next to me when I'm Lyft driving. Yeah. Like they're they're having a full it FaceTime conversation. It makes me conversation. crazy on yes. the bus. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to hear your conversation. But, but I don't hear their conversation. I oh, mean, I do. They have headphones uh, on, right? Uh, yeah, everybody they have a headphone on and they're talking. On. In, oh, oh, no, no. Uh, that it wasn't yeah. the car. Do uh-huh. not have the headphones yeah. on. Nope. Nope. Uh, yeah. So, so the, I I think I think it's going to actually start to threaten mm-hmm. the typical voice call. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'll i be interested to see how cell phone carriers handle this because now you're going data versus voice. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they want to drive you there because it's data versus voice. But I think there is going to be, it's going to start to really pivot and take on. Do you know how many people's phones I've worked on over the last three months that don't even have the phone icon on their home screen? Why wouldn't you? <gasps> Wow. Oh, God. <laughs> they don't make phone calls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh. And you, please tell me you still have a phone. I still have it, but I would say I don't go into it. It's in a folder. I, but we, I think John, I've asked on the show. John, call people. It's okay. It's can, I, okay can I turn yes. the phone off of my phone? But I will, I will <laughs> say this, though. I would say nine times out of ten... My f- the phone call is a follow up to a text message. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So normally I go into okay. the text message, okay. tap the person okay. that texted me, and then say dial. Yeah. Like I don't. I, I see. don't go into the f- even when I make a phone call. You're not going. I into don't the phone. go into the phone. I app. go into the phone app to get the app, to get to the contact list to get an address yeah, exactly. to somebody's place that I copy and paste in the ways. <laughs> you can just type it into the thing but that's a revelation to me I never thought of it like I can take that valuable that I can reclaim that valuable doc space oh. and get the phone out of there like why haven't I even see done see what that? I did what would no. you put it in this place it doesn't matter I just my point is why am I wasting that space so I only even, get like five of those right and, and, and okay. for the people okay. for the people that I wouldn't text and I would like actually call I usually do hey mm-hmm, call so and so Right, like I'm still not picking up, picking up the phone, mm-hmm. or or like yeah, here, I don't know the number that, for like, the pizza place. Mm-hmm. I don't know the number for the pizza place. No, no. But I go to Safari, look up the pizza place, and tap the phone number. Like I don't go into the. I, I yeah, I don't go into the phone app. Yeah, and some people that don't know that. Yeah, they don't know that you just have your contact list. I mean, ask me if I want to make a voice call or a data call. Why? Yeah. Why should I do anything else? Right. Right. So I mean, I I'm gonna try somebody unless it's like a business like call or something. So and, when does this be stop being called a phone? Mm, <laughs> what mm, it's a what what other name? It's a no, communicator. No, no, no. It's, it's, a, it's gonna be it's gonna be when it leaves this form form factor. Right, it's gonna be when this becomes your whatever the Google Glass is or something, or it's when I mean, really, <laughs> on, go ahead. Think of how far of a form factor change this is, though, from what we had before with the handset yeah. that yeah, no one even true. recognizes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Hmm. I mean, is is it just a is it a size difference of another inch? Plus, plus, phone calls are so annoying and out of hand right now with robocalls. Oh my god, you're not I, I wish, I literally wish I could just turn off incoming calls. I wish you could turn off incoming calls for numbers that aren't in your contact list. I agree. Period. Which <laughs> Android is making steps towards this. Yes, they are. And there are apps that you can, there are services that you can do, but it's a pain in the ass on the iPhone. Android's kind of more ahead of it. Like internally, they're doing it. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's going to be a thing where I think another version or two, it will be like I can turn off the phone part of my phone. Turn off. The you think about could. what I mean, you, if just you change said. your notifications enough. But but, but, no, but but if I have, if I'm driving, if I have my phone, if I don't have my phone asleep, and I'm going to get the phone call. Yeah, the the driving yeah. is. I the can't worst. stop That's that. Right. I can't, I can't stop that. Plus, it's linked to my iPad. When I get a phone call from a telemarketer, it lights up three devices on my desk. Yeah. But I want that link for when I am using phone calls, 
but then I add that, but then I get like six calls a day that are bullshit. Easy. So it's a, it's a thing. All right, we got through one prediction. Cynthia Klosky, what is your prediction for the year? <laughs> I'm still building on my success in uh, streaming video. <laughs> Stay <laughs> with what you know. <laughs> well, but so, but I've been, I really am interested in like which of these um, streaming services is going to win. Like if there's a winner, your winners are only temporary anyway. Like Facebook's going to be gone in two years. That's another prediction. That's not for 2019. So um, 2020, we've got that. We've got that marked down for 2020. <laughs> okay, so. write that down for 2020. Facebook will take a sizable hit by the t- by 2020. <laughs> Um, but what I'm thinking is that next Netflix is on top right now and it's going to stay on top. But if you look at the trends, like the growth of non U S streaming, um, it has totally, it's exceeded now U S streaming. So mm-hmm. I think that's going to continue. And I don't think Netflix is going to be able to maintain a lead outside the U S so they'll continue to be on top in the U S and will not be on top. They'll have lost ground outside. Do you think it'll be one big player is there, outside is of the U S or is it'll be. Oops, sorry, there's a couple things. I think, yeah, I think that different countries will have different successes. So there's like a, a China, you know, we're all watching, I think, China and India. And the one that's big in China won't necessarily be able to conquer India. You know what I mean? So well, the China one's state those players, run, right? Uh, I think it has, well, everything is, right? Yeah. So probably. So yeah. they have to use it. Mm. But also, but the growth of that, because China is so big. Mm obviously will be noticeable. Hmm. Well, what's the YouTube channel that's going to overtake as the, uh, the number one it's from India. It's, um, it's a YouTube channel, Bollywood based. That makes sense. Yeah. That um, makes sense. Yeah. I was just looking at that. It's the rate the the record label and that mm. does all that Bollywood music. Mm-hmm. They're going to overtake at, um, what is it? PewDiePie. Probably Thank PewDiePie. You. He's the number one right Makes now. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Absolutely. All right. So um, speaking of, you mentioned, we were making some mentions about Facebook. Um, I think there's going to be, I, Facebook has taken so many hits that I, I don't think grandma's going to stop using it, but I, I feel like they're poised for somebody. Yet. If something better comes along, people are going to flock to it. Not that it's going to be the next Twitter, the next Facebook level yet, but I think there's going to be a new player for social media, media, however we do things. Maybe it'll be, you know, a FaceTime thing that's annoying Krauss in the public, you know, but there's going to be a new platform, media platform of some sort that is going to rival. Like, I, I think generally when we talk about social media, we think Twitter and Facebook, right? And I'm looping Instagram in with Facebook. Yeah. Right, we 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 think like that's it. That's that's the players. That's the players. I don't count LinkedIn. LinkedIn's very specialized, but as a general person that is communicating on a broad basis with other people, I think Facebook and Twitter. I think there's going to be a third one, Ooh. and because I I think that enough chinks have been in the armor of Twitter and Facebook and stuff they've done to themselves. You know, I kind of made a comment or I was starting to think earlier this year, like something like WWE, that's just a the big player in that space that they can only they could screw their own thing up. And they kind of did with the Saudi Arabia stuff like Facebook is screwing their own thing up at this point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like very, very directly. And Twitter has made those missteps as well that, you know, I mean, and we were talking about grumpy old men podcasters here, uh, uh, Krauss and I before the show, like, I think like that, that is informing people's thoughts on Twitter that say, Oh, Twitter is completely crap and nobody should be there in the first place. And they think the same thing about Facebook. I counter that. It depends on what you do on those platforms and who you follow and you can make them nice places for yourself too. But I think that enough it's in, you know, I mentioned about like phishing schemes are in the evening news. What Facebook did today is in the evening news. That's what makes people distrust it more. And if something else, again, if something else pops up that that poises a replacement, don't know what that is, but I think we're going to be looking at a third major player, um, at least considering it by the end of 2019. What do you think the interplay is between the people using the platform and the advertisers backing it? Because like right now, you know, people are asking me all the time, like, help us have a digital strategy for advertising. And 
Like it's hard for me to say advertise on this new platform that just rose up. Okay. Right? So, um, so I, but it depends on where it is, you know, it depends on where it is and that it, it's going to be a hard conversation, but it's kind of that. I, I hate to quote like a Gary V thing about how like Facebook has been under, under uh cost for worth for like a long time. Right. Like, I think that you'll see that on a new platform say, Hey, this has a very specific base it's undervalued right and that you know i think that would be the sell on something like that i, I, feel, I like, feel like podcasting is there right now you know what i mean when you think about what it costs to advertise in a podcast you but finding the right audience it's you have to change your strategy to be very niche right right now we're getting paid money to help use like google's tools to like find the right target audience to right search right. ad at i feel like up so, and comers i don't know I feel like up and comers, it's it, better to a, have as someone who wants to broadcast, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much. Um, I mean, I mean, we would certainly take a look at. Uh, I, I think what what Cindy brings up about about cost and 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 uh, and marketers and advertisers having to deal with that. I think we're looking at reach. Um, are, are are we going to get something that's that's uh, accessible in the United States? It's accessible to our, our immediate audience mm -hmm. versus, um, I, I mean, I, I, something like what, what you're talking about, Mike, it really feels like it's, it's going to come from India. It's going to come from China. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, in, in, in I want to, I want to point out uh, everybody's favorite GPS Waze is an Israeli oh. company. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and we have done a lot in this country to discourage the smart people from coming here yes. in the last couple uh, of years. And it, uh, yeah, especially in the last couple of years, I, I, I think you just, you, you'd look at reach. Um, mm -hmm. If, if, if like ways you're, you're delivering uh, an audience that's in the United States. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't know that, that the newspaper needs to reach other way, we, we we get hits in India. We get hit over 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 hit overnight hits in in uh in China. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, we need to wait and see uh if, if that's going to be a, a a workable thing for us. Mm -hmm. But does the social media become less social? What because it's international or just more? Just, just because it's a just because groups. it's something based in because we got to think Facebook is just as popular in a foreign country in a different language as no, it is here. What I'm saying or, is, will there be a, a backlash almost where the groups become less social and more? Okay, I'm going to share this with my family, or I'm mm -hmm. only going to share this with this group of friends. Oh, the, well, you could mean like path. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the second coming of path, maybe. maybe. You know, but you could do that on Facebook yeah. today, and I don't see people taking the time. It's a thing, yeah. Like, I, I don't see the mass. But people don't know half the things you can do with Facebook. Right. So I, I guess I don't see that taking place. Mm -hmm. But So you expect it to be another social Yeah, I think it's somebody network. else, because... Um, It'll become a. Tr it's going to become a trust play. No, or Plurk will come back, guys. <laughs> That's it, Plurk. There That's, it is. Yeah. Chachi's yeah. still. Chachi's I, still I holding on to that this. account. Tom's going to buy oh, back like MySpace from Justin my Timberlake. Like I wonder if I still have a Plurk account. Probably not, right? <laughs> I, I still have the app on my phone. Yeah, that once a year will we double? Wait, on your phone? Yes, I do. That's I do. awesome, man. I do. That is awesome. Jeez. All right, all right. Now we got to press people. Uh, Kraus, what is your awesome thing? I think, <laughs> or no, your your prediction. I'm sorry, your prediction, awesome prediction. My awesome prediction. I think we will see even more integration when it comes to home automation than even what we're seeing now. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think, while it is becoming socially acceptable. It it really hasn't hit the complete mainstream yet for the automation or the talking to the devices. The, 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 you're talk. You're gonna start talking to everything. Mm -hmm. Every so so everybody getting used to being the Tony idea Stark. of the, exactly of yeah. talking to your refrigerator and talking to you. Know. I think I think that I think you I think you make a good point and I agree. I think what you're gonna see is 
every home appliance will have, have an integration have point. some integration point or it will just be built in right your you know, your your dryer alexa will come on and say hey your clothes are dry that kind of thing you know that's what i want in life as yeah exactly I, I think you're going to see a lot more of that of those integration points now granted mm -hmm. you know the companies are going to have to decide which train to get on mm -hmm. so do they speak. do they i i mean every every company that i purchase products from is cross all three platforms i i don't i don't i disagree with that sorry really? cortana yeah i'm sorry yeah sorry yeah. cortana Cortana, cortana you can ask alexa to do your work for right. you that's right um jeez but yeah i i just i i see unless you're samsung because they own smarter smarter things or whatever mm -hmm. it is Right. Um, every every other brand seems to be. I mean, you you look at how many plugs and whatnot are out there, and they have all three icons. Yeah, you're on right. Them. You're right. Um, or they have two of them, and then three months later, later they the get third the one third, third comes one through, comes through. through. Yeah, so, you're right. Um, so uh, in the meantime, so we can buy uh, Uncle Crappy a little bit more time on his prediction. Uh, here is Woo. the Plurk account for Cynthia Klosky. <laughs> you guys can go see it. Uh, there it is. I, I pulled up the desktop version uh, as well. Uh, your karma is zero. Yeah, is, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I haven't uh, been here since, you know, apparently 20, 2009. Let's see. Nine, but, uh, nine years ago. <laughs> nine years ago. But. They put that um, background in there with the spider webs, and I'm charmed that they pointed <laughs> out to me my the, my lack of visiting Plurk, but nice. also my general. That is actually what my regular house come looks back like as well. to clean up the spider webs. Is this <laughs> yeah. this like so the duck maid is not yours at the in the in nope. the background? Let's see. Uh, Cynthia is wearing a sweater, corduroys, and shoes with laces. Uh, farewell, summer. We hardly knew ye. Let's see. Need another day of the weekend. Is tackling to do's. Treating herself to dinner at Monroe Hotel. Hello, sirloin steak. Is, oh my God. Let's see. Oh wait. Let's <laughs> it's see. It's a snapshot of a like different timeline. era. It is no uh, era. That's, that's awesome. That's Cynthia fantastic. says dark Monroe chocolate Hotel. for. When's the last time you were at the Monroe? Dark oh, dark chocolate for breakfast. Uh, it's great day already. Um, mm -hmm. When you're working on I a... was fun on Plurk. I was fun on Plurk. <laughs> we were all fun on Plurk. I oh, missed that we were, we were version all, of me. We were all fun on, fun oh, on Plurk. Oh, people are, let's see, be enjoying ribs and pulled pork for lunch. Mm-mm. And there's a little, like, knife and fork smiley face going on there. Uh, let's see, no veggies. Nom, 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 nom from the cheat. Uh <laughs> This is amazing. This is spectacular. All right. Look, there's there's Dirta with Lushy. That's great. There's everybody here. <laughs> Everybody's oh, still friend. here. It's a time capsule. <laughs> Uncle Crappy, Mike Pound. What is? Wait, wait, wait. Producer Missy. I have a plurk addiction. Hold on, I got to turn on that mic. Please, please. You have a plurk addiction. Addiction. Addi addiction. <laughs> it was an addiction. And now it's an addiction because we're all going to look through all of our old plurks. No, here's the problem. My clerk was registered with my Hotmail account, <gasps> oh, which no. I no longer have. Oh. oh, no. I deleted that thing years ago. Yeah, probably about you nine years ago. You never an email. No. I'm sure I have a Lycos out there for Mail City somewhere. You just somewhere. let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I bet I have so much spam that I didn't want to deal <laughs> with it anymore, and I was maxing but, but They were going through and it. saying, we're go this is an active yeah. like, Yahoo yeah, was doing Yeah, and that's what I got. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'll just yeah. let it go. Yeah, so I can't get into my clerk. I think, I think I had to actually... Uh, and this was a couple years ago. I, I actually had to go back and reclaim the account. I just I, I have no idea why it even occurred to me. <laughs> but um, probably probably but an I, appearance I on this show. In the, mean, um, in the meantime, we do have uh, you can see her as perk at Rebella's flaw. So, <laughs> and she was enjoying the WWE Hall of Fame uh, uh, induction ceremony nine years ago. No, I can't hear you. So, um, you with us, Crappy? Uh oh, uh oh. Hello. You're back. Hey, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Before we lose Crappy again, what is your prediction for the uh, 2019? Sort of. What is your prediction for a, for a hot? Minute. We got. We got you. For a hot minute. <laughs> what is your prediction? I'm gonna assume. <laughs> go ahead. What is your prediction? Sorg, I'm going to assume that you're asking me about my prediction. Yes. yes. For 2019. And I, and How I did we lose their audio? I have no, I have no idea. Let them go. 
Hey, wait, wait, wait. Yes. 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 Just go, give us your prediction before go, you go away. Go ahead. Sweet, before you go away. AI and journalism. Whoa. Uh, AI and journalism. Boom. The New York Times is doing this already. They are, um, and this is both a, 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 a caution and and a um, and an encouragement. If if you register at some point, we will be able to, uh, to watch what you're reading and serve you. And this goes back to to what Chula and I were talking about before. We will serve you an email based on your interests. New York Times is doing this right now. Um, and oh my God, I hope that the Post Gazette is able to do this sometime in the future because, um, as, as, as I said, as we're able to, uh, to serve um, uh, our newsletters to really targeted audiences, the, the, um, the, the open rates, click-through rates are ridiculous. So that, that's, um, that, I think that's going to be a thing that, that, uh, that, that I hope we look at and that certainly the industry is going to look at in the, in the important sense. And, and God bless Portland. <laughs> fantastic hey i want to give a shout out to our friends uh that we've been supporting us for a good long time here first of all alexander, alexander cars the design and media over at alexandercars.com putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print and all digital projects he does a lot of great stuff with us and uh he can help you with your project too alex k a eight hrs dot media and our friends at slice on broadway who uh give us a little man they knew we were doing some big stuff tonight and helped us with all the pizza fixings uh and it, well, you know you guys have been enjoying it here in the studio thank you so much to I'm, them i am totally calling you on tomorrow absolutely <laughs> you're not far from a slice yes. at least yes. yep over no, there PNC. No. pnc park boom pnc park Let's the east end and carnegie pa as well as right here the og the original in beachview on broadway Right on the T line here in the Beachview neighborhood. Thank you so much to them. Check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Guys, this is the last awesome cast of the year. Um, there will probably, I think I'm going to be uh, uh, kick the dust off some old interviews. So you guys have something to listen to if you're not following the awesome chat uh, over the holidays, or maybe we'll have something else pop up in the meantime. But uh, there'll be a little bit of something in your feed, hopefully, for you for the holidays so you're not without over that Christmas vacation. Uh, but in the meantime, um, let's see what else is happening this week. We got, uh, some wrestling stuff. We have the Pittsburgh current. We'll be having their last show of the year on Thursday morning at 10 AM. Hopefully Facebook cooperates with us again this week. And, um, Friday night, we'll be having another video game Twitch stream. So stay tuned for that as well with our friends, uh, Brohemus invitational, some pro wrestlers playing video games on Twitch here in the studio. Always an interesting <laughs> time. So, uh, Swords world combined. Basically, right? It's been happening more and more, man. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Cynthia Klosky, where can people keep up with you? I am at shiftcollaborative.com. And um, by the way, we're doing a cool project. We're in the middle of this thing called Straw Forward. So if you go to Instagram, straw forward, check out our project. We're recycle, we've are recycled, we recycled and we're repurposing a bunch of straws. This is going with the Pittsburgh Sustainable Restaurant um, Program. So it's going to be a cool sculpture of the Carnegie Science uh, Center in January. Hope you check it out. Nice. Thanks. Pulling up a little bit of it here. Oh, ooh, those look kind of fun. We're making a, a nine foot by nine foot by six foot sculpture of a, of a food chain. Birds and fish and water and nets all made with straws and stuff nice nice go check it out go follow shift collaborative you guys always have a lot of fun uh projects going on over there and of course uncle crappy he has he has plugged his newsletter a little bit <laughs> i plugged my newsletter but and, and if you if you go to the uh, the post because home page you'll see a button on the uh, upper left uh that uh that will get you to our news um uh, newsletter subscription page um, I would uh, please subscribe to whatever interests you. But if you subscribe to PC Feed, you will be reading what I write most days. Um, you can also go to post-gazette.com slash beer me where I talk about this stuff. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's about it. He has been doing video for local media news print medias i think the longest <laughs> of anybody i know <laughs> ridiculously long time yes from the days of slicing cheese with a sword to today 
Before flip cams were even invented. Before flip cams yes. were a thing. I used them. I used them. You're using real cameras for that BRME program, aren't you? Yeah, I, I did. I, even my phone, occasionally. Even, oh, that yeah, is happening on your phone. <laughs> See? 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 It happens. Crazy Krause. Yes, sir. But he's not saving my Xbox One. From That's Doom, from being don't, thrown in the garbage. Don't forget your power cord. Don't forget Thank your you. power cord. No, yeah. not cord. You're wow. a brick. brick. You're a brick. brick. The yes. cord is mine. The I have a new one on is. the way. I mean. Yeah. Crazy Krause on Twitter. Ron Krause on Facebook. There you go. I've actually had a listener reach out once for some problems with a, um Android device. There you go. So, reach out. He's kind of the go-to for that. Yeah, I should have I should have tagged you in that one podcasting question because somebody's trying to podcast on an Android phone. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I sent him an iOS app. He's like, got anything for Samsung? <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, Anchor. Anchor. Oh yeah, Anchor would be a thing. Anchor yeah. would be yeah. a thing. Yeah, we'll have to pass that along to him. Yeah. He was in the chat room earlier, actually. Yeah. John Chichilla, chillatech.net. John Chichilla on the Facebook. Chilla five seven nine on the Plurk. Are you hitting any uh, technological house wow. experiments? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I glossed over that. <laughs> any tech tech house experiments you're doing over the holiday? We'll see what Santa Claus brings. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I have a, I have a feeling there will be yes a couple. I'm I'm hoping, but I'll let you I'll let you know. Can you talk to your Christmas tree see, yet? We're boring. My yeah, mine. You the only way to turn hold on. Ours, hold on, I wonder. The only way to turn on our Christmas tree is to to to, to talk to it. Amen. Is this thing? Hey, Google, where's Santa? He's at the gym with his trainer getting in shape. Santa is at the gym with his trainer. We only do NORAD, NORAD for Google. So now I'm like, wow, I can actually ask Google where Santa is this yeah. year. I figured over Alexa that would do it. Yeah, you have to talk to my tree also. <laughs> talk to your tree. <laughs> Uh, thank you everybody for joining us and, and thank you everybody that's joined us throughout the year of course Dutter's not here to make it uh, she's doing awesome things uh, somewhere else uh, and uh, we'll be back with the new year with everything and uh, geez what what year is it what, how many years have we been doing this eight years something like that so um, thank you everybody that's been a part of that everybody that drops in the chat room here every week uh, that contributes on the Patreon and uh, that, that help awesome cast be awesome and uh, he, he said, uh, um, um, hit up the sponsors. Let them know that uh, you, you heard about them on the Awesome Cast. That's going to help us with some of the plans coming up here in uh, 2019 as well. So uh, thank you, everybody. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome new year. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.